Western Australia introduced new cultural heritage laws that came into effect on the 1st of July. Premier Roger Cook said, our laws do the same thing as the voice. Well, this weekend, more Western Australian tree planting events have had to be cancelled because a Perth-based Indigenous corporation is withholding its approval to plant those trees until $2.5 million in compensation is received. The South East Regional Centre for Urban Land Care had organised about 120 volunteers to plant more than 5,000 seedlings around the southeastern suburbs of Canning and Gosnells before it was called out, called off. It's the second time this has happened in two weeks. And those are the same two weeks that the laws have been in place. And that's for something as simple and benign as just planting some trees. Now, permission to do that costs $2.5 million. How much will the fee be to build a home or a factory? Or how about a mine? This law gives us a glimpse of what lies ahead, hidden among all of the good intentions and big feelings that are being used to strong arm Australians into accepting the voice. When people like me said the voice would end up being sand in the gears of government, making it harder than ever to get the projects underway that deliver opportunity and jobs, particularly in remote communities, supporters of The Voice dismissed it. It's part of why it's just so crazy for corporate Australia to be so much on board. It will be even more slow, complex and expensive to get any kind of approvals with this additional layer with which to contend. And yet, this Western Australian legislation is just a fraction of what we can expect with an Indigenous voice in the Constitution. Mr Albanese's proposal for a constitutional voice is flawed on so many grounds. Because it is wrong to allocate different rights in our democracy to different groups based only on their race. It's flawed because there is no evidence to suggest it will close the gap for the around 20% of Aboriginal people who still experience subpar life outcomes. It's flawed because everything we know about how to cure disadvantage comes from empowering the talents, aspirations, initiative and creativity that lies within the individual and not from indulging group grievance. And it is flawed because it sets up a culture of greater bureaucracy, red tape and fee for permission that will, as many sensible people have been saying from the outset, make it even harder to get projects up and running in this country. Let's face it, it's already too hard and too expensive to invest in Australia. Our energy prices are high, our labour costs are high, our red and green tape add too much cost and delay, and then the activists start their playbook of stalling and racking up costs in the courts. It's documented in the playbook of the Australian Conservation Foundation and practised by so many other green groups. Anyone who doesn't think the same approach will be adopted in the Indigenous space is just dreaming. The right thing for this country, particularly as it struggles with inflation and debt, is to remove bureaucracy, improve workplace productivity, commit to reliable, affordable energy and streamline and speed approvals that bring economic opportunity to remote parts of this nation because that would make a difference to the lives of disadvantaged Aboriginal people and all Australian people. But this voice, this tool of entrenched grievance, division, and a permanent barrier to economic opportunity for all, well, this is precisely the opposite of what our nation needs. What if we thought about it another way? If the goal of the voice is simply to more effectively close the gap, and that's what people like Mr Albanese tell us, then why do we need this thing in perpetuity? Because it's going to be there forever if we put it in the Constitution. In many ways, putting it in the Constitution is a bit like an admission that we're giving up on ever achieving that goal of closing the gap, of all Aboriginal Australians having the same opportunities in life as everyone else. Well, you know what? I'm not prepared to give up. I'm not prepared to wave through a constitutional change that will harm our institutions and our social cohesion, but do no good 
for vulnerable Indigenous people. We owe our Aboriginal brothers and sisters better than just giving up. Because when it comes down to it, that's what The Voice does.